All right. So the next question Roland is asking is suicide a sin? I think that there are suicides in the Bible. So Roland, first, I surely hope you've not lost anybody to suicide or that you're contemplating it. I mean, obviously, uh, there's, I think, few things more sad and tragic than someone to get to a point where they just don't want to live anymore. They mm -hmm. feel so hopeless, um, just what are suffering so much that they feel that's the only way out. So uh, our heart goes out to you if that's the case. But it's a good question, and lots of people struggle with this. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start first with, is it a sin? And that could be answered with ex Exodus 20, verse 13. Maybe we could put that up, and Wendy, you can read that. It would be a doozy of a verse. You shall not murder. So, as we've been talking about even in prior weeks, the, the Ten Commandments are illustrated illustrative of larger points. So even if you think murder doesn't apply to yourself, what's the greater point? I mean, life is precious. Even your own mm -hmm. life is precious. And to take that is a sin because, you know, if you love God, understand God loves you, you will want to let him to continue to love you and you will want to be in his presence and you will want to continue loving everybody around you. So mm -hmm. that's sort of where love falls into why sin is or a murder of self is a sin. And honestly, though, all of us are probably guilty of this. We're all doing things that are taking tolls on our body. We're not exercising mm -hmm. like we should. We're letting ourselves be more stressed than we should. We're not eating like we should. So uh, again, this is not necessarily something that only people who commit suicide necessarily are guilty of, but yeah. And, and uh, as we talked you, earlier, like, we're all guilty of sins. Like, we don't even know half the sins we're guilty of, most likely. I mean, the Bible says we're born into sin, right? So, mm -hmm. like, I think we have to be careful how we treat the word sin and understand that, like, yes, yeah, sin is bad, but, like, doesn't mean that we can't have a relationship with God. Yeah, exactly. And God understands our circumstances i mean yeah. jesus came in the flesh in human flesh experienced everything we experienced mm -hmm. all the temptations so it means he was even tempted to commit suicide i mean think about it. one of the temptations yeah. from uh, from satan was you know just jump off this cliff i mean god will protect you but right you know that would have been presumptuous suicide mm -hmm. which then goes into the next point not all suicides are the same and the Bible has some examples, which, uh, which uh, he asked for, uh, Roland asked for. So, first, Judges 16.30. Mm. Let's take a look there. Judges 16.30. I think this is one of the first suicides, one of the most famous suicides, I would say, in the Bible. Do we have that first? Maybe our director is occupied. <laughs> He's juggling a lot. So, here it is. All right. So, then Samson said... Let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might, and the temple fell on the Lord, uh, on, the, on the Lord's and all the people who were in it. So the, the dead that he killed at his death were more than he had killed in his life. So, did Samson kill himself? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> did he call him, cause himself to die? Yeah, I mean, yeah, and that, yeah. His action led to his death, but was it for the purpose of you know just robbing himself of life because he didn't want to feel pain anymore? No. Yeah. That, sorry. Exactly. So, <laughs> so that gets into our all suicides the same. I mean, let, let's contrast that now to First Samuel thirty-one, mm -hmm. starting at verse four. And this is now talking about King Saul. Mm -hmm. We're flashing forward to the, into the future a little bit after Samson. 1 Samuel 31, 4 to 5. And, and it, a little bit of background, Saul is in this battle against the Philistines. He's losing horribly. The day before, he was also prophesied by the witch that he was going to die. So oh, go ahead, put it back up. Then Saul said to his armor bearer, draw your sword and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised men come and thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore, Saul took a sword and fell on it. 
And if you read the next verse, the armor bearer also... And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fall, fell on his sword and died with him. So we have two suicides here. And are these commendable in any way? Or would we say these were probably sinful, sinful suicides? Yeah. But, but even more so, is it... Here was the suicide... I mean, I, I guess I can't, I don't know how to frame the question, but I'll just make the point. Really, this suicide seemed to be just the culmination of a, of a life that went down to a trajectory of sin. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what's so fascinating about the story of Saul, because it, it almost shows you where he starts going wrong. And it's always when he chooses not to obey, he wants to go his own way, do his own thing, and it just has this trickle effect, ending with him becoming unhappy, turning to... Uh, spirits for um, guidance, you know, and feeling like God has rejected him, and then he takes his own life when mm -hmm. he feels hopeless. And you know, I think what's important to point out here is you know, the, the the question w w says I think there are, that there are suicides in the Bible, and I think it's really important to understand that um, just because something is in the Bible doesn't mean it's it's a recommendation by God. A lot of things <laughs> in the Bible. Yeah are there to teach us lessons and of and, what yeah. we, you know, of, and, of what, what to stay away from also. And that's the point of Saul, exactly, because right. he kept going down the wrong path, doing his own thing, and look where he ended and up. And it ended up where he he okay. couldn't face the world anymore, was too afraid to face the world and, anymore. And what was about to happen, yeah. yeah. And, 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 it's, and it's tragic, it's because mm -hmm. that's not, you know, God doesn't want people to... to to take their own life. No. He wants he wants us to turn from our separation from him yeah. and turn to him and and that's why Paul's story is so tragic cuz God tried so hard so many times mm -hmm. and Paul was still so insistent of going his own way. Yeah. Saul. Uh, and I'm not trying to sorry Saul, yeah, and I'm not trying to <laughs> Say this is a case for everybody who's committed suicide. Mm -hmm. I mean, there might be people who have never heard the gospel the right way, never right. known there's a God they can turn to. Mm -hmm. um, or uh, like Winnie and I have done a documentary on mental health where we filmed over 100 interviews for it. Mm -hmm. And we saw consistently time and time and time again, people testifying about how they would have voices in their head telling them to just kill themselves. Mm-hmm. It was incredible. I think we had five people at least tell us mm -hmm. that happened to them. This voice telling them just end it all. Mm -hmm. And that voice, I would say, is none other than mm -hmm. Satan. Yeah. Because he it's wants good. people to feel hopeless, despair, mm -hmm. that there's no hope and yeah. and take it. And th and that's, you know, that's not God's voice. We have to, you know, that's the most important thing to understand is that wherever that comes from, like, it is not God's voice that's exactly. telling, you know, that's telling people and, to do that. And does God understand when someone's heard that voice, felt hopeless that there's no way out and ends their life. Yeah, God understands that. God God knows all things. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that a person who committed suicide will never ever make it to heaven? I don't buy that. I don't think there's anything mm -hmm. there that really says that will always be the case. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you have times, <laughs> maybe you disagree, Tina, but I oh, don't no, want no. I don't think we can <laughs> judge people and say, oh, this person's last act was was murder of themselves and their sinner and and mm -hmm. not going to make it to heaven. I don't believe yeah, no. that. I, I just want to reiterate um, what you guys are saying is, you know, there's always two voices and it's always Jesus and the devil. And, you know, it says in John 10, 10, it says that, but the thief comes, but to kill, steal and destroy. The devil only mm. wants to mm -hmm. kill you, steal your joy and destroy you. That is the, the devil's Amen. purpose. And he might do it in a sneaky mm -hmm. way. Um, but Jesus says, but I have come that they might have life and might have it more abundantly. And so I just want to share, you know, if anybody out there is feeling hopeless or feeling suicidal or feeling like, you know, there's just, you know, no purpose. And they're hearing these voices that are telling them just end it all. There's no purpose, you know, mm -hmm. horrible things. And believe me, I'm somebody who struggled with depression in my life. And, you know, God has shown me a better way. And it's been God's love that's changed my heart and changed my life in such a dramatic mm -hmm. way. Honestly, if you knew me 
so many years ago, you wouldn't recognize me. Um, I was never happy. <laughs> I, was, I never smiled. Mm-hmm. I never laughed. I had no joy. But God has given me joy because Jesus came into my life and he's given me a life more abundant. Um, and I, I know that voice of the devil that's telling you, you know, you're worthless, you're stupid, you, you're nothing. But Jesus says, no, no, no. I died for you. You have value. My eternal life, I'm, I've given up for you because I love you. And, you know, no matter what the mm-hmm. devil says, Jesus' truth um, definitely wants to speak through those lies and, and give you hope and give you a hope and a future, um, which he promises you through his, his blood. Yep. And I know we have some comments, I think, from our our viewers. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So let's let's so can we read that. Landon. Landon has a comment. Oh, oh, we'll start with those. Olivia. Olivia. So yeah. God is the answer to all our problems. There is hope in Him. Amen. Yes. Amen to that. And Landon is saying, uh, Ecclesiastes seven seventeen: Be not overly wicked, neither be a fool. Why should you die before your time? Mm-hmm. yep yep yeah and mm-hmm. honestly i think sometimes we get just to go with that verse sometimes we get so confused like you know about you know what what to do with our lives and we just kind of need someone to be like hey you still have life you still have hope you still have some things don't go before there could be good in the future you don't know what tomorrow holds um, you know i think so many times we just get so focused on the negative stuff going on today in our lives and we mm-hmm. don't see beyond you know that darkness and but god has you know something beyond that and so i'm sorry was there another comment from landon yeah landon has yeah, a, i really like his next one <laughs> my two right. favorite verses for suicide are these psalms 34 17 to 20 yes. when the righteous cry for help the lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles the lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves their the crushed in spirit and this pause right there i mean we were just talking about, you know, how, how does God appear in people's lives? Here it says, God is, when you're brokenhearted, you, when you're feeling most hopeless, that's probably when God is the closest to you. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's true. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Amen. And then, oh, the next one is your favorite verse, Wendy. <laughs> one of my favorites uh yeah. jeremiah twenty nine eleven. for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope yeah yes i mean that is one of uh the most important verses i think to hang on to when we feel like life is hopeless life is useless it has no merit you know that that is a lie because god's promise is that uh, he has plans to give us a future and hope and uh, he is faithful and sometimes we hit those rock bottom points and I've been there myself I was there at a young age and um, I've had times trials uh, in more recent years and it uh, but no matter what we go through God's promise is that he has a plan for us. And if we hang on to that, then we can make it through those deepest of trials. Mm-hmm. And and I know what it's like to feel like you can't function in life and you can't like um, be of use. And, and, but God has a plan to get us through and he does. And he's done that for me. And I've seen him do it for so many other people. And, um that is such an important thing to hang mm-hmm. on to to just wait it out <laughs> just mm-hmm. wait it out and the and the time will come <clears throat> and Amen. then uh fatty says god is good let us give him a chance Absolutely. amen to that and yes. there's actually i think one more suicide and it's actually a good oh that's actually well, we talked about the suicide for others, which actually Jesus did himself also. He says, I, I lay down my life. Mm-hmm. And there's no greater love than this than then that a man lay down his life for his friends. But why did he do but, it? To save yes, exactly. everyone else. <laughs> so I'm saying that, in a sense, a, 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 a suicide mission for the benefit of others can be a, a good thing, right? Because you're not valuing your, yourself over others. But there actually is another suicide that is good. And in fact, we're all called to do. As Paul says, I die daily. And in mm-hmm. Romans 6, 3 to 9, he talks about how 
Um, you know, do you not know that as many of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Mm -hmm. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that the old man was crucified with him, with Christ, that the body of sin might be put away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Mm -hmm. For if he, he who has died has been set free from sin, sorry, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we die with Christ, we shall believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ has been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's natural for us to want to die. We want to kill ourselves. Sin is so horrible. We made so many mistakes. And guess what? Bible says you have a way out. You can't commit suicide. You should, in a sense, spiritually through Christ, die on the cross. Just imagine your old self dead, especially when you go through the act of, of um, baptism. God's given us a ceremony to go through where you could say, I have died to my old self. That person is gone. I now am a new person starting with a clean slate. And it just com contrast God to modern day cancel culture, you know, where someone made one mistake or said one bad thing even a few years ago, and now we're told, you know, this person has to be shunned and never forgiven. That's totally contrary mm -hmm. to God. God says, I want you to always start with a new slate. You can do it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. You're not your past. You can be mm -hmm. a new creation in Christ today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, the important thing to understand is that this isn't a... Um, this isn't a death of our physical body. This mm -hmm. is a death of our, uh, our old way of thinking, our inappropriate desires. Yeah, you're thinking, what, yeah. yeah, death your of our attitudes, yeah. your desires, exactly. But also, I think it, it's it is just mentally accepting that that old you, your decisions, the way you were in the past, can be you can detach from that. Yes, yes. you're not your past. That's, yeah. And it's like like when you <laughs> face something that you know you shouldn't be doing. You you have that strong temptation that you you know um this isn't good for me but I'm used to doing it, right? And to to take to resist that, to say, you know, I'm not going to uh go down that route anymore. I I want something different. I want God's mm -hmm. path. Like when you're when you're facing that and you're making that choice like it can make you physically sick. You can feel like you're going to die in that process. But that's the process that we're supposed to die in. That's the process where we're supposed to hold on and fight that, resist that, even to the point that it it kills that way of thinking. It, it makes it so painful that we don't ever want to go back there again. And so, you know, we, we have to fight that and resist that and 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 go through that mm -hmm. exactly so and i think you know well, it's oh sorry just really quick, <laughs> no i was just gonna say sorry just to give you um you know of your um two promises in that regard you know the first is you know first john 1 9 that says if we confess our sins he god is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness mm -hmm. so no matter what you've done no matter how far you think you are from god um as long as you come to him, he is more than happy to forgive us and cleanse us and make us new. And it says in Galatians 2.20 that I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. And yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life that I now live, in the flesh, I live by the grace of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So mm -hmm. don't forget, God always um, accepts you with open arms. Jesus says, any man that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Jesus is always standing there with open arms, ready to embrace you. He loves you and he's got a purpose for your life. And he has a new life that he wants to live in you. And um, there's beautiful things ahead.